so just as a little bit of background, I do social media all day, every day. It's what my business is. It's something that I am super passionate about. And so, so I really, really love it. So we're going to start out. Um, I have a story. So back in about 1988, um, our stake was given an initiative and it was that we take a book of Mormon and we type our testimony in it and we put our family picture in it. My dad was a bishop. He said yes. So he did. He got, we got our testimony, our picture in, and he sent it off. And just this year, so 2023, we got a call from a man in Southern Utah and he said, he said, Hey, I was just visiting England and he had gone to the England, one of the England temples and had stayed at one of the temple apartments. And when you stay there, you have, you sometimes have to stay with a roommate that you don't know. And he was partner, partnered with a man named Michael Tillman. Now, Michael Tillman, when finding out that this man was from Southern Utah, because I'm from Utah as well, when he found out that he was from Utah, he said, hey, do you know the Johansons? And that's my maiden name. And he said, no, but Michael went on to say that 35 years earlier, when he met the missionaries, the missionaries gave him a Book of Mormon and the Book of Mormon had our testimony and our picture in it. And I want to, I want to show you the slides. Can we go to my slides? Perfect. So that is, so Michael pulled out the Book of Mormon right there and then, and he opened up this 35 year old Book of Mormon. And he said, I read from this Book of Mormon every day. And I look at the testimony of the Johansons. And that is me, the little girl sitting on my mom's lap. That's how small I was. And so I know that, well, first of all, I want to just think about what it took to get the Book of Mormon into Michael Tillman's hands. Okay. So let's just, let's just like, think about this. Some missionary mission president, someone had to think about this initiative, right? We're going to get testimonies from, from members. And then they had to go to the missionaries, order all the books of Mormon, send them to the stake. The stake had to take them to the bishop. The families had to pick them up. And then the families probably had to go. I mean, I'm looking at this looks like a typewriter to me, right? They had to actually like type, type, type it out. Then they had to go get their picture printed, put it in the Book of Mormon, give it back to the stake president, stake president to the mission home, mission office sent to missionaries throughout the world. And this specific Book of Mormon got into the hands of Michael Tillman. Now, I will testify that God will get will move mountains to get his word, his Book of Mormon and the word of God into the hands of people who are ready. And now those mountains can be moved in a click of a button and the top of a screen. President um, McKay said, now I'm going to read this slowly because it's very dense, but discoveries latent with such potent power, either for the blessing or the destruction of human beings, as to make man's responsibility in controlling them the most gigantic ever placed in human hands. This age is fraught with limitless perils as well as untold possibilities. So we have the most gigantic responsibility and opportunity with technology. That's what he's talking about is technology. And I think we spent so much time talking about the limitless perils, right? People will, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot that can happen with, but I think it's time we talked more about the untold possibilities. So here are a couple other quotes. I believe that the Lord is anxious to put into our hands inventions of which we laymen have hardly had a glimpse with the Lord providing these miracles of communication and with the increased efforts and devotion of our missionaries and all of us and all others who are sent, surely the divine injunction will come to pass for verily the sound must go forth from the place into all the world and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The gospel must be preached unto every creature. This is President Hinckley. We are confident that as the work of the Lord expands, he will inspire men to develop the means whereby the membership of the church, wherever they may be, can be counseled in an intimate and personal way by his chosen prophet. We see that, right? We're following people, we're following our, pro our prophet and leaders on social media. They are in our hands, literally. And Elder Bednar, almost 10 years ago, g gave the a landmark speech at BYU. And he said, what has been accomplished thus far in this dispensation, communicating gospel messages through social media channels is a small, is a good beginning, but only a small trickle. I now extend to you the invitation to help transform the trickle into a flood. So we have prophets and apostles who saw this time coming. They knew this was going to happen. And I think we've been, we've spent a lot of time like 
being really afraid of social media and afraid of phones. So my hope in this presentation is to give you some practical tips and like something you can do right now to actually make an effort. So here are just some good numbers I want you to see. So back when Elder Bednar said those things, there were, um, and until now, this from Facebook has almost doubled in users. Instagram, I mean, that's a huge jump from 200 million. Pinterest from 70 to 445. And TikTok wasn't even around. <laughs> so there, things are moving really rapidly. And missionaries are getting it. So I, I don't know, Rachel and I actually live in the same mission and we met, even though we're in the same state, I think we actually haven't met in person, but we first met online. And when COVID happened, my mission was a social media mission. And so I got really close with my mission president and um, I was helping with the social media efforts in our mission. And at that time, well, this was actually, I, I talked to mission president a few months ago and he said that missionaries in our mission are spending four to six hours a day on social media, and they are getting 25 to 30 baptisms per month. And a third of those are from social media. A third of the baptisms right now are coming from social media and could double, and we could double that amount if members got involved in social media. So there is so much potential for good to spread our light and our goodness, um, but are we taking it? So when I, I grew up in a small town in Utah, and this is not an actual picture of me, but <laughs> whenever we go home to visit my husband, who's this, like, he's this big, strong man. Okay. He's six, two, he's dashing. And we, he loves to go to do like night walks. Cause there's no one around You can see the stars cause we're in the middle of nowhere. And so he loves to go on night walks. So one day really recently we went on a walk. And one thing I should tell you about my husband is that he doesn't like things jumping out at him. Okay. That makes him turn around. So we were walking down the road and uh, about a block away, this dog shows up and starts just charging at us. Well, that, that spurred the fight or flight in my husband and he took off. Now I'm used to stray dogs because I grew up in this small town. And so I stood my ground and started yelling at the top of my lungs and the dog looked at me and he turned and ran the other way. So I think this happens a lot with social media is when we first see it, it's so scary because there's so much unknown. Is it gonna bite me? Is, is something bad going to happen? And we need to decide, are we going to stand our ground and, and yell at it and, and, and say, no, actually we're gonna use this for good. I say we should, I think we should. So let's talk about what our goals are with being on social media, because this is where the practical stuff comes in. So the whole goal of social media is not to convert anyone. Actually, that is that is the Holy Ghost job, not our job. Our job is to find and join with good people to share Christ's love with the world. That is it. We do not need to be weird. We do not need to do anything that makes us feel uncomfortable. We need to find and join with good people to share Christ's love with the world. That is it. So I'm going to give you three steps to getting online if you choose it. So the first one is pray and get personal revelation if you should be using social media or not. If you should, then ask how. Here's the thing. I am an expert on social media. I am not an expert in your personal life or in the personal life of your kids. You parents, you know your kids, you understand them. So you need to make this a matter of prayer because we would not just like without any instruction or any time behind the wheel, give our kids uh, keys to the car and say, go ahead and drive, right? That would be scary. It wouldn't be safe and probably pretty expensive. That's the same thing with phones and with social media. We need to be very intentional and go to God and say, is this child ready for this? And then help them and teach them and give them some rules to follow and, and have that be a, a moment of conversation. And the next thing is to train the algorithm. So if you don't know, Instagram has an algorithm and the, it, it, uh, the whole goal of the algorithm is to get your content in, I mean, well, to it's, its goal is to keep you on the app longer. So it's, it's paying attention to how you're using the app. And if you have any content, any like posts or videos that you are watching, liking, comment, commenting on and sharing, it's a signal to the algorithm that you want more of that content. Okay. So the algorithm is just, it's just a mathematical equation. It's paying attention to how you're using the app and what content you like to see there. 
it is neither the algorithm is neither good nor bad, right? It's neutral. It's just it's going off cues that you give it in order to understand what kind of content should be in front of you. Okay, so that's what the algorithm is. And this is this there's an algorithm on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram. There's an algorithm any everywhere because the whole goal of all of these apps is to keep you on the app. And the way to do that is to feed you information, feed you content that you are liking and enjoying. Okay, so what we get to do is we get to take control of what we see in our feed. It is up to us. If it, if we're seeing things that aren't great, it's probably because we, we keep liking and commenting or even just watching things that aren't great. And so you can go to your explore feed if you're on Instagram, or you can go to on TikTok if you're just scrolling because TikTok opens up to the explore feed. And if there's something that you are seeing that you're like, oh, this isn't really what I should be watching, you can actually just push down on that video and something will pop up and it'll say, like, you can just mark uninterested. And this is a way that we train the algorithm. So we need to train the algorithm. We need to clean up our feed, our explore feed. And one of the great things I love about Instagram, social media, all the places is that, yes, we need to fill it with people. I mean, we should be following good people, right? People who share their testimonies, share light. And also, what are some goals that you have? Maybe you want to learn how to crochet. Maybe you want to learn Instagram. Maybe you want to get better at working out. All of these things. There are people creating content to help you achieve those goals. I guarantee it. There's someone out there that is creating content that you could follow that would help you achieve those goals. So you need to follow good people with good messages. And that's actually great because we want to get in on as many conversations as we can because we need to share our light and our goodness, not to convert anyone, but just to help people feel of God's love for them. And then decide what content you want to support your goals, just like I said, and pay attention because you're going to unfollow people who aren't great for you. And if you have friends or people that you follow that, that are not building you up, you can unfollow or you can mute them. So mute them just means that they you're still following them if they went and looked but you're not getting their content and so if there's anyone making you feel less than if there's any content that makes you feel not good enough you are in control of your feed you train the algorithm you train instagram you train TikTok. the type of content that you want to see and you can test this out i mean test this out have you ever like gone down a rabbit hole of puppy videos <laughs> and you're watching these puppy videos and then you're like, the next day you keep getting puppy videos and then you get more and more and more. And until you're like, what in the world? I don't need to see all these puppy videos. Then you like have to, then you start looking for other things and it trains the algorithm that's like, oh, she's moving on. She actually wants to learn about knitting now or whatever. So that's what we need to do um, is train the algorithm. And the third step is we need to intentionally create and share content and join communities. So we are not here to be islands as members of the church, we are to go out to all the world. So if crocheting, I don't know why that's the example of the day, but if crocheting is what your passion is, then go and find communities and come be a part of those communities, learn and share and make friends and, and just be a part of bringing people, lifting people and sharing your light and goodness with others. And, and so let's talk about what to share. You can share your story and experience. I love the first talk about, hey, this is what I went through and this is why I'm sharing this with the world. Share what you're learning. Share other people's content that is uplifting and inspiring or formative. Now, President Nelson just gave a talk about, about peacemaking, right? That whole peacemaker talk. It's fantastic, especially as you read it with the, with the filter of social media. And here is the deal. If you... <laughs> If you want to share goodness, you have to show up with goodness. There is not any room for you to yell at people through the screen. That's not Christ-like. And anger never persuades. Hostility builds no one. Contention never leads to inspired solutions. So if you find yourself in these heated debates or finding yourself getting mad and you go to your, you go to your keyboard and you feel like you have to type it something out, you need to remove yourself. And that's okay. Because we are never going to, if we are not acting in, with Christ's love, then we're not going to bring Christ's love to people. And so the Savior's message is clear. This is President Nelson. His true disciples build, lift, encourage, persuade, and inspire. 
No matter how difficult the situation, true disciples of Jesus Christ are peacemakers. We need to make sure that no matter how we show up, no matter where we show up online or in person, that we are being true disciples of Jesus Christ. So there was a study done really recently by Pew Research, and they asked their the people that they so they were the research study was of people who are non who are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. And they did, there's a lot of, there's a lot of research here, but they asked them, did this five quick poll or whatever, and they wanted to, it was like a quiz because they got graded. Okay. So these are the questions that were on those, like true or false can live with more, can members of the church live with more than one wife? Can they can't eat chocolate? They can't drink alcohol, can't have blood transfusions. They do believe in this, in the son of God, Christ is the son of God. So those were the questions that were asked. And four out of five respondents failed the quiz. Okay, so I don't know who's thinking that we can't eat chocolate, but if you didn't know it, we totally can. <laughs> and we do with abundance. And this this graph right here at the bottom, it's it really, it says that people who don't like members of the church don't know a lot about the church. So there's a direct correlation with people knowing about us and people liking us and, and accepting us and and bring us into their communities. And in order to do that, they have to know us. They have to know someone that is a member. And this is also from the study that how do, how do people get information about Latter-day Saints? Well, if you'll notice that, you know, the, the second, well, the, it looks like the biggest one is 23% friends and family. But if you combine TikTok and Facebook, I don't know why Instagram isn't there because I feel like that would be a big part. But that's 36% of of people 18 to 29 are getting information about our church from social media, 36%. And that's bigger than any other place here on this graph. So we have to be out there. We don't have to be, you know, standing on our Instagram pulpit and bring our testimony to everyone all the time, every day. But we do need to be there and we need to be in conversations and we do need to share our light and our experience and our expertise. So we already read part of this, but it's worth reading again. Um, beginning this day, I exhort you to sweep the earth with messages filled with righteousness and truth. Messages, messages that are authentic, edifying, and praiseworthy, and literally to sweep the earth as with a flood. Imagine the impact we can have as hundreds of thousands and millions of members of the Lord's Restored Church contribute in seemingly small ways to the rising floodwaters. May our many small individual efforts produce a steady rainfall of righteousness and a truth that gradually swells a multitude of streams and rivers and ultimately becomes a flood that sweeps the earth. The technology, social media is the way that we get God's and Christ's love to all the world. It is, it's the way that we do that. And we as church members have a responsibility to understand how, how it works, to pray to our Heavenly Father and know how it can be a blessing to us in our lives and then to take action. I know when we do that, that God will be there and he will help us find those people who we need to impact and that we will be able to, to sweep the earth as prophesied. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.